Erica. Um, so I'm a postdoc in the Heinz lab and today I just want to briefly describe what my image is to you all. Um, it may look a bit like a flower but it's actually an image of a retina uh, showing the blood vessels that grow on the surface of the retina um, and I'll tell you a little bit about why we're interested in studying this. So the vasculature or the circular, so circulatory system is a network of blood vessels that carries blood all throughout our body to deliver oxygen and nutrients to all of our tissues. And this is critical for all the tissues in our body to function properly. And importantly, tumors also rely on a network of blood vessels to provide nutrients to support their growth and survival. Unfortunately, however, having this network of blood vessels also provides an outlet for cancer cells to escape the primary tumor and spread to other parts of the body, which is what makes cancer so deadly. So given this important role that tumor vasculature plays in both the growth and metastasis of tumors, it's been quite an attractive target for cancer treatment. However, so far, nearly all of the therapeutic interventions that aim to target the tumor vasculature have largely failed in the clinic. Um, and we don't completely understand why. So what we want to do is gain an even better understanding of how blood vessel networks normally develop in our body and the factors that control this process, which could provide us um, in the future with new and possibly more effective ways of intervening with the formation of blood vessels in a tumor. So a great place to study the normal formation of blood vessels is the retina, which is a tissue layer at the back of the eye, which collects light and transmits these signals to our brain through the optic nerve. And the retina contains a highly organized vasculature network that provides blood to the retinal neurons. And this is critical for maintaining proper eyesight. Um, and this is a great model to study vasculature, vasculature development because in mice, these blood vessels actually develop over the first two weeks after birth. And so this allows us to more easily visualize the vasculature at various time points over the course of this development. And you can see here in these images, the progression of blood vessel growth from day one to day nine after birth, where the blood vessels, which are shown, which are shown in fluorescent green, begin growing at the optic nerve at the center of the retina, and then progressively begin to migrate and grow out radially towards the edge of the retina, until by day nine, they've reached the edge and cover the entire surface of the retina. And so um, this system really gives us a great opportunity to more easily identify genes or other factors that may either promote or perturb the growth or organization of this vessel. So vessels grow by a process called angiogenesis, and this is when blood vessels begin to sprout and generate new vessels from the pre-existing ones. And the migration and survival of these cells that make up the walls of blood vessels depend on interactions with their surrounding environment. And what I'm showing you here in this closer view of the retina on the right is that the vasculature, which is shown in this yellowish green color, develops on top of an underlying mesh meshwork of protein fibers known as the extracellular matrix, which is shown in red. And in this image, if you look carefully enough, um, you may be able to see that the cells at the tips of these sprouting vessels actually reach out and directly adhere to these underlying protein fibers. And so in this way, the cells of these sprouting growing vessels can receive signals from this underlying um, meshwork of protein fibers. And this helps them to both survive, but also helps guide the direction of their migration so that they follow these pathways that have been laid out beneath them all the way out to the edge of the retina. And so what we're doing um, in the lab is we're studying these interactions and how this underlying network of matrix fibers regulates and maintains the proper growth and organization of this vessel network. And we're hoping to identify new proteins that may exist in um, this matrix of protein fibers that might participate in this process. And again, I'll just reiterate that we hope that in the future, studying the normal, for normal formation of blood vessels might offer clues as to what spurs the formation of blood vessels in a tumor, and this may offer a new avenue for therapeutic intervention in cancer. And so with that, I would like to thank my advisor, Dr. Richard Hines, and the entire Hines Laboratory, and I'd like to especially thank um, Tao Nguyen, who initiated this project during her PhD studies, as well as Jeffrey Kuhn from the Koch Institute Microscopy Facility, who spent quite a while helping me to figure out the best way to image these retinas. Um, and thank you all for listening, and I'm happy to take any questions.